Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Scrap Time. My name is Ben Nassim. I'm joined, as always, by James Crowder, a.k.a. The Coach, a.k.a. Chris, a.k.a. Coach of Atlanta Phase. Chris, how are you doing today? Doing great, Ben. You know, the third time's the charm. I'm proud of you for getting that one Second down. time. Third uh, time. What? Second time. Oh, my bad. Second time's the charm. And, you know, I'm proud of you for getting that intro done, dude. I feel great. Let's get, let's, you know, so excited to talk about this. Do you, uh, <laughs> we fl- you flew back Monday morning from Columbus, or did you stick uh, around at all? I flew back like Sunday night, well, Monday morning, but like really early, like super, super early. And then I had on what I got back at like California, like 10 a.m. I got back really early. <laughs> do you have a direct? Do you have a direct or no, like no there, direct- dude, you can't fly. You can't fly from LAX or Burbank to Columbus on a direct flight. It's just not possible. So uh, there was just, it was, uh, we had like a small layover, but it was really, it was really easy. Like I literally, I got off the plane and then like walked. And got on the next one. Like it was like already boarding. Yeah, I don't know. So it used to be directs back like when we in the World War II league. You know, I used to drop Dylan off for the mm. directs to LAX. But yeah, I don't know what happened to him. I guess since COVID, like they all got eliminated. So I feel bad. Like Tommy was complaining about the same thing. Is he had to connect what from one first class first class flight to another? Wow, tough life it's for Tom. It's a hard life. Uh, man. uh but yeah, yeah, no, it just it sucks. So but anyway, I I really like the event. I wanted to kick things off. Um, and just before we do, by the way, we're going to have, uh, from LA thieves cap and potentially Shane joining us in about 20, 30 minutes chat. So we'll talk a little bit about early. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to send you the outline. Yeah, it's my yeah, bad yeah. for not, uh, you're good. I just want to make sure. How do you want me to send How do you want me to send this to you? Uh, you can just DM me. Twitter. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah. DMs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shane said it'll be here in 20 minutes, but anyway, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about thieves in the beginning chat, but we're going to say most of the thieves stuff until the end. So if you guys have questions, if you drop those in once we get there. Um, but I want to kick off and start kind of about yeah. thoughts about the <clears> event. <throat> Obviously, um, you know, originally Major Four, the, the original plan was to be back in New York at King's Theater, I think, in Brooklyn. Uh, and then I guess, and this can kind of mixed signals, I guess, sort of genesis of like somewhere in between issues with the venue and maybe game field pulling out. New York decided November they weren't going to do it. I guess no one stepped into the plate from like an org side or maybe other issues. And then the league ended up picking belong to do it. We had pro M here last year. So it's not the first time we've been this venue. So Chris, I want to ask like your thoughts on the event and from the venue and like operation side, less on the like uh, team zoom. We'll get to that later in the show, but just from your like, you know, perspective, how the event went. Um, you need to resend me the link, by the way, I have to request access. It's like a private link, but, um, All right, well, but, but keep yeah, going. I got you. Yeah. I mean, just refresh in a sec. That was good. I mean, it's, it's kind of what we talked about previously i it was not gonna be a major with fans and it's gonna be like this cool arena with like this crazy energy but i think it was good enough i don't know you know there was it was teams got to play each other on land and on in a fair in a fair setting and it was fine with me i think the only thing i didn't like i guess would be my complaint was just like dugouts were literally next to each other so it was just yeah. like, kind of awkward like talking to you know like being able to hear the other coaches talk like while you're watching your match type thing is just like stupid. Like, but like, it was just kind of weird in that sense. But outside of that, like, I thought it was fun. Like, you know, we all had setups to warm up. We had plenty of time to be there in the venue from start to finish. Played fucking some Call of Duty, and that's about it. Obviously, it's not a major in the sense with fans, but it's as good as we could get. I'd rather have done that than be online. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I can't really complain in that sense. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> Well, I agree with you. If this major, I know Daniel had talked about there was an opportunity or there was a discussion that would have been online. That would have been miserable. Um, so at least we got on land. I mean, Belong's got its pros and cons. Um, it, it's a, not a particularly massive room. And to your point about the dugouts, like there aren't a lot of like external rooms where you where they you have two of those. You can isolate players, coaches. So there are there are a certain number of like situations like that that. Or less from ideal. Um, I think this is probably the last time something like this happens. I think this is definitely a stopgap solution. But I thought overall, like from an operation standpoint, there weren't any major delays. I know Pro Am last year in the same building, there were a lot of issues. I think they simplified a lot of things and how they loaded in, loaded out, and kind of set up the venue to kind of make things were on schedule. And I think pretty much like they nailed it every single day. Um, Probably it was just sixteen teams though. There's just more people in that building. Four more teams. Yeah, and they have multiple streams. Yeah, no, that's the, yeah. 
the multiple streams didn't really help, I think, for Pro Am. No, that, um, that event's not that venue is not made for a 16 team tournament with multiple no, streams. No, that was crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it was too many. Uh, but I mean, other than that, I thought like, you know, we were in the building, obviously <sighs> the flank was there. We had a little couch next to the stage. It was great. Um up until do you hear the story about our mm -hmm. setup? Do you did you hear the story? No, what happened? Okay, so we were we were setting up. So original plan, we're like, okay, so I I picked out the corner I wanted. I went for a site visit like a month ago. Esports engine people were like, cool, we're gonna be in this corner, it's gonna look great. And then like a week later, you know, CDL had us up. It's like, hey, like, you guys want to do some interviews for broadcast after matches? We're like, bet, let's do it. Um, so we figured it out. Tom also did like some stage hosting stuff, so that was cool. So we get there, we start setting up and start kind of laying it out the one the way I want we were gonna lay it out, which is our back to the stage it was gonna look really cool. We start setting up. <laughs> And then I forget who it was. It might have been like Scrap. It was like someone on, on like one of the teams, either Florida or Toronto, is like walking over. And it's like, so you know, we could see like, we could see, see your like monitor with like your program feed, like the podcaster from the other side of the stage. Mm -hmm. We're like, ah, well, that's a bit of a problem. Like, <laughs> people are just going to look over and be able to see the mini map. I didn't know so that. So we had, yeah. yeah, so we we had to flip it around where we faced against the wall, but it wasn't actually too bad. We found a layout that was really good. And the nice thing for us is they let us borrow these like, Two hundred thousand dollar cameras. I guess borrow because they were using them for broadcast. We did the interviews, but they gave me the feed so I can use them when we were just like doing the show or just like doing a watch party. So that was really cool. So I thought from our end the setup was really cool. I think for you guys, obviously, it would have been great to be in a bigger venue with fans. I do think I wanted to ask you about this, and then maybe this will come up later when Cap and Shane get here. Uh the like the people standing behind the stage. So you guys, your PPA was right behind the stage for the first two days of the event, like. I think there was some complaining on Twitter afterwards that like there was some advantage you in Toronto being able to watch people behind the stage. You think that was BS? Like, what are your thoughts on all that? <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> nah, I'm being dead serious. No, people were legit after Thieves won. People were complaining. Uh, who was complaining? About Shane, about Shane and Cap and like the Thieves guys, you know, after they won their first match, mm -hmm. right? They'd be not in, in winner's finals. And they were chilling for three series. They were just sitting behind, just like watching the games go on. And people were like, well, uh, the thieves got an advantage because they were able to, to watch all the POVs from behind who, the stage. Who was complaining? Did anyone, <laughs> in, the, did anyone people... in the league complain that has something no, to do with the match? No, <clears throat> randoms, bro. Complete and utter randoms, Chris. And that's yeah, why I brought no, it up because no, I was like, dumb, this, this is I mean, obviously, like, it's probably like a bad look. But like, dude, it's like, what's the difference between sitting there and going and watching the podcast review that's a half a second delayed it's the same exact fucking thing like what this is it, that's that's just dumb I, that's that's why like, it's what? not it's not a good look but like bro it's just dumb you can see exactly what they're gonna do like it was just the venue set up in general like it wouldn't have mattered even if they weren't sitting right behind them and they were say you know like how like where our ppa room was like sectioned yeah. off like say you sectioned off like a certain range that you had to be in within the stage Bro, all the players scream their fucking callouts anyway because they have a soundproof headset on, so you can hear them from across the fucking venue. Like, like there was nothing like, bro. We you have access to every team's VOD in every single match, like with the mini map included. Like, there's there's nothing to complain. That's what about. I'm saying. Nothing like, that changes. Like, nothing. It's like POVs are not always particularly helpful. People are saying like, you know, Hector was talking about it on the watch party. I I kind of heard what Hector was saying. I think it was more frustration because and we'll get to kind of optic and sort of a sunday work for them i think it was less about that and more just annoyed about how they were playing as a squad um but like i don't think like even being behind them and hearing like comms and snd like i don't think you're hearing i, I don't know man you're i don't I mean, know i don't think the strats things over but they didn't even play the so map that they watched you so would like, have had you would have had to literally pack everyone in a fucking corner of the venue for them not to be heard that's my point Oh, a hundred percent. That's bro, actually I can the hear, I was gonna get too. I can hear my players from the dugout like call out. Bro, we, when when a BZ like one before it, obviously the entire venue like erupted because it was fucking crazy. Like our team started going crazy. But like, bro, like everything in hard point, I knew if we like won or lost a hard point rotation before it happened, just because I can hear my players commenting like, Oh, I got two. All right, one more. All right, wait, oh, good shit, good shit. Like push out. You know what I mean? Like and they weren't even like screaming. The venue was just small. There you unless like you wanted to like push everyone out of their own venue like you know what i mean to like watch the matches i mean i don't know i don't think that's a big deal at all yeah i mean i don't think open. small i don't think small so that because back at the old mlg studio that wasn't that small but like because of 
Wait, you, at the old MLG building. studio, you can hear the no on the old MLG yeah. studio when we used to warm up in the scrims. That's where I was going to. Yeah, yeah. there's a black curtain, and then the main stage. I could yeah. hear like, bro, we used to joke around like United's going B, like you know, like while we were watching <laughs> in the back, like bro, like back you can hear it, like up. yeah, like. It's because there's no external sound, Chris. The the reason that you you're hearing them, and the same with the MLG studio or any other studio you go to, any black box, there's no speakers pumping white noise or sound or game sound or casters. Bro, it's you're an empty building. All the yeah, yeah, there's you can hear yeah. everybody. Like it's this dude. The fact that this is a topic of discussion is insane. It doesn't fucking matter. You oh, have a vod. Bro, yeah. people complain to complain. There's not there is nothing wrong with that. Like uh, there's nothing you could do unless you wanted to kick everyone out of the venue. And again. You want to see what a team does in Search and Destroy, you can literally go watch the Search and Destroy VOD with all their arrows and their classes and everything. Like, you know, like, I don't know. I think that's silly. It shouldn't, yeah, be, a, it shouldn't be a thing, and it would never be a thing in a regular major, but like, it's, it, there is no advantage to that at all. I, I thought, listen, my, my case on it is, to your point, Codcaster is way better. You can see all the arrows. Uh, I think the comms thing is completely overblown because they don't even play the map and I don't think it would have been that big of a thing. I think Thieves can focus on their own game anyway. Uh, Wait, and so... Thieves weren't the only people that did that. Why? Oh, why, I mean, why? That's what I'm saying. You in Toronto, you guys, your PPAs were behind, but I saw pretty much every team sit behind the stage at some point this weekend. New York sat there a lot. Toronto sat there a lot. Florida was, was there a lot. It was kind of hard not to. There was nowhere else to watch the matches. They, yeah. Dude, the, well, also there were like these two TVs, and everybody no, was like... No, there weren't two TVs, because those TVs were 45 seconds delayed, Ben. And I, oh, I know, and that's why people start standing behind our setup. <laughs> yeah, and like yeah because I was that way. Well, that's screen. what I was doing. I was standing off to the side <laughs> of the flank because you guys were the only one with the live feed. So you couldn't watch. Like, bro, the only way to watch the match was actually doing it. Like, bro, the map would be over and like, yeah. it, you would still be on like, it would be like 170 to 200. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh shit, the map's already over. Like what happened? Like, dude, there, there is nothing wrong with this. That's just, that's just ridiculous. Well, I agree. So we'll we'll move on. I, I think we'll talk about it more on stream. I'm I'm gonna uh, punt a little bit on the thieves part because Cap says yeah, we can wait. like three minutes. Yeah. Uh, but I think my final thought on it is this: I think it's the last time we go back to Belong. I think it was a stopgap, and I would assume going forward the league wants to have crowd focused events. So yeah, you know that's that. Uh, let's talk about your team while waiting for Cap. Um, another event where you guys didn't play like the worst Call of Duty all time. Although I guess I'll ask you that question in a sec. You, you guys don't think we played the worst against... Call of Duty all time? <laughs> what do you think? How do you think we played, Ben? <laughs> Only the little, I'll get there in a second. You guys, I'll, just let me summarize and I'll ask you the question I was going to ask. So you guys got third. Um, I guess my quite two, kind of two questions to you. How would you grade your team's performance? A being amazing, F being we suck. And like, what's your biggest takeaways from the weekend uh, last weekend? Uh, well... We suck. <laughs> like, I mean, dude, we got fourth place at the event. We didn't get third. B, a 1v4 and a 1v3 from a BZ does not mean we got fourth, third place. Craziest like, 1v4 I think I've ever seen. That was wild. I sh dude, it's, it's, we don't suck. I know for a fact we don't suck. I would say we suck if I thought we sucked, obviously. Yeah, like, uh, but we just are not translating anything of our respawns consistently into matches. Even the hard points we win, I feel like... I think the Seattle one was good, but a lot of the hard points that we win right now in matches are still like, there's a lot of mistakes within those wins. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of like bullshit two or three pieces or something like that. And like, we are just not translating anything of like what we do every day to like matches. And it's not like a nerve thing or anything like that. I like that. It's just like, I feel like our communication in matches needs to just be way, 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 way better. Like way yeah. better. Like it's not, it's like unacceptable at this point. Like we need to get better at it. It's like, and if we don't, like it's going to be a major issue. And like, we simply just need to start playing better during match days and like start playing the game at a, like at a better level against like these teams. Like, I don't think, I mean, I don't have the statistic off the top of my head. And like, again, I say this with full confidence that we can win champs this year. I, I know for a fact we can, we can win major five too. Like the team that I watch every day, I know how fucking good they are. And everyone knows that. It's just a practice. It's, it's it's finding a way to get the shit to happen more consistently, more consistently in matches and shit. And like, with that being said, like our communication needs to be way more flawless. Because I think a big thing of what we're like, what I'm kind of talking about is just like when your comms are shit, 
or they're off or anything like that, the teamwork usually kind of follows behind that because the co communication's bad. And then like everything else kind of falls like, you know, you fall behind in Call of Duty and then you start playing, you take harder gunfights, you start falling behind on rotation, you can't stay ahead of the game. And all of a sudden you find yourself like in a hole, you know, you know how that goes. But like, yeah, at Snubbles. the end of the day, like we just need, there's no excuse. There's nothing to do with like, we need to do it. I don't think we've won two hard points in a single match this entire year. And I, again, I think I full confidence of how good my fucking team is. And I know that they're the best when they play at their best, but like right now there's no excuse for us to keep doing this. You know what I mean? Like, like the certain things need to change. Uh, I'm not going into what we're going to change right now, just because I don't really think that's my place to say, like in the sense of like what needs to like change within the team, like just like some pacing stuff and like, like little things, you know what I mean? But we're, we got to work on some of like the micro things, but I think a really big part of it is getting our communication like way, 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 way better. Like we had a long team talk. Everyone kind of told us like, you know, what they think's going wrong, but it's not about like knowing about what's going wrong. It's like, you have to solve it. You know what I mean, you have to figure it out. And like, we have not played, we have not played like good respawn in almost any of the series we've played this year. And like, we're still doing you know, good, like top three and all that, but like, we're not here to get third. Like, like uh, you, that, that's what it is. We're not here to get third. And even the event that we won, we're not here to win an event on a Neslo, like on a, on a fucking control and search. You know what I mean? Like I'm, we're here yeah. to fucking win tournaments and dominate tournaments when we play well. And I know for a fact that's possible, but you can't, you know, we can't keep saying that like, you know, we're so good without backing it up. So like we have to, we have to change there's a couple of things that we're going to change going into practices this major. It's going to be a lot different uh, from my end, from their end, and it just has to get better. That's all it is. Like, and, like, and, and that's like, there's nothing else to say. Like, I'm fully confident that we can easily win major five and champs back to back. But I also know that that's going to come with a lot of changing of what we're doing right now. And if we do that, we will. That's it. I looked it up, by the way, the last time in Caps here, so I'll drag them in a sec. The last time you guys won two hard points in a series was uh, Toronto. Uh, what was this winners? Toronto major one. How many you times guys... before that? How many times this season? Uh, you did it. I actually don't know. I think that might be the Is only, that the only time. One? Uh, no, you did it against uh, okay. Toronto in the major one qualifiers. And you guys lost game five. You won both hard points. But you didn't win that okay. series. And then okay, that's so it. That's, that's the only uh, two so, times. So that's two. How many, how, 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 how many series have we played this entire year? Uh, more. <laughs> that's Sorry. no, I, I'm, not, I'm like, uh, bro, I'm not even uh, like. 28 series you yeah. guys have played. And like, bro, like, I'm saying this from my perspective. The players know this too. Like, I'm not roasting my players in this sense. Like, this is all of us. Like, bro, we just need to flat out be better at respawn. And like, the thing is, we are better at respawn than people are seeing. But at the end of the day, like, we need to prove that, right? And like, we need to get it done. And. There's a, there was a lot of talk about what we need to change as a team in multiple different ways, like practice wise and a bunch of other shit. We had a long, like a, a long fucking team talk after the loss and shit. And we just got to do it. That, that, that's literally all it is. We have to, we have to now solve the issues that we know that have been, we've known these issues for a while, but like they have to be solved. And I saw someone say something about Slasher. Slasher wasn't playing that well on uh stage three qual stage four qualifiers online yeah. he played fucking fine at land and nothing changed and that's what i said a few times in my chat like slashers like quote unquote poor numbers have nothing to do with why we're winning or losing like obviously it's a little easier if you're getting more kills like hypothetically but all of duty's a lot more than that so again if you watch that and that's what you think respectfully you're fucking stupid so yeah well, there you go. Uh, we'll talk more <clears> about, I think, phase next week on the show, and you kind of let us know how practice goes, and we can dive on that. But I want to, can you drag Cap in here? Let's, yeah. uh, let's, let's get Cap in and talk about his team real quick. <clears throat> Cap, can you hear us? Yeah. What's going on, boys? What's up, Cap? Can you hear me? Oh, I hear you. Yeah. Loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you. Lovely. So, I appreciate you joining us, Jay Cap, uh, head coach, LA Thieves. Uh, first off, congrats on the weekend. I know you guys have been. Um, you know, grinding this season, you've had some lows, you've had some highs. Uh, you obviously lost that losers final in major two, struggled in major three, but finally came out with sort of the number one spot winning uh, this last event. Like going into this split and this event, like Cap, like what were the things that you guys were focusing on to kind of turn around some of the performance you had prior to that? Um, 
Well, after Major 2, we thought we were in a pretty good spot, losing to Chris's phase in the finals. And then Major 3 was just an epic breakdown against Vegas on that hotel hard point. That, yeah. Obviously, there was only one map of that series, but lose a map like that. Tough to bounce back after that. So I don't think Major 3, like, we were actually, like, that bad of a team. We got top 8, but, like, I don't know. We played good. We were, I thought we were a good team going into it. Played pretty well for the most part. It just, that, I mean, obviously, that will just mess the whole thing up. So going into Major 4 and Stage 4, there wasn't much, that, like, specifically we were working on. Um, search and Destroy definitely needed to be improved. Yeah, so that was a focus. <laughs> um, but if anything, if I'm being honest with you, our scrims were pretty bad leading up to that major four, <laughs> leading up to this past weekend. So you were, you were losing a lot of them. We were losing a lot. Yeah. Um, I think we have good like ideas and I on how we want to play and concepts, but we were not executing in practice. And then we showed up to the major, and you know. I guess the rest is history. Yeah, I guess people... Someone, someone flipped the switch, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what to attribute it to fully, but I'll take it. It's happened quite a few times in Connecticut because people don't see practice every day. And, like, obviously, we all talk behind the scenes. And, like, there have been a number of teams that have won over the years. And, like, prior to whatever event, like, they were just getting fried. They got to, to land, and then things just felt different, and they just got in the flow. So it's not, like... It's not super super rare it's definitely happened but um i appreciate your transparency yeah. and honesty on that go ahead chris i would say that's definitely on the rare side uh but at the same time like it also depends like why you're losing scrims and shit too like i i, yeah. I think there's people i'm not saying on your team cap i don't fucking know but like they're like i think some people like just the way they like talk communicating like just like their effort and practice compared to like some of the matches like i'm not saying it's like you're not trying in scrims but like it's just like a different way of practicing and shit too you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I think, I think, yeah. like, it depends on, like, how you're losing scrims or why they're going bad. Like, for example, like, with, with what you said, Cap, like, if you're having, like, the right mindset, like, you're kind of just not executing. And like, there are also days where, like, you just, like, you know, just do, like, you know, just doing little things wrong. Like, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Because there's yeah. some, there's some teams you watch in this league that, like, I mean, fuck, even sometimes my team's in matches right now in Hardpoint, but, like, where you just like see the mini map and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Like we're like, there's dead, you know what I mean? A lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that all the time too. So it's just like, it depends on like how you're losing. Cause I even feel like when we scrim you guys specifically, like I know you guys weren't playing that well before major four, but when you were to scrim you guys, like you can kind of see like, you know, the mini map and just be like, yeah, like they're not just fucking running around like morons. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's well, like a different, like, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, we do have like a good game plan. I feel like most of the time I'm on hills, but um, I will say that my players, because we brought it up, we had a talk um, mm. Thursday night at the event after we beat Minnesota in our round one. We kind of we didn't know if it was a good idea or not, but we showed the players our hard point stats and scrims for the past yeah week or two, and our win rate was not good. We were like winning like one out of three hard points and little scrims uh, leading up to the event. And like I said, we didn't know if it was a good idea or not, but we just knew me, Shane, and um, our GM, Brandon, who also great analyst, does all the stats for us. Um, we just knew like if we were playing like that in scrims, like, yeah, it's, you can turn up at the event and win and do all this crazy shit, but more often than not, if you're playing bad in scrims, you know, it's not just going to directly translate to land success, yeah. tournament success. It's not really sustainable. Like, listen, like we talk about everything. We agree with how we want to play. Um, blah, 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 whatever. We agree on all this stuff. And we have these talks, but then in practice, we're not doing it. So what's going on? And they're just like, the players are just like, they had two theories. One, which I will give them some benefit of the doubt, that it is hard to replicate match energy, specifically at a tournament, even compared to like an online match. It's, it's hard to replicate yeah. that every day in scrims. You know, yeah, me, Chris, we've been there. Yeah. You know, you get a time in COD where you've been playing for X amount of years. It's like, dude, yep. practice every day. Especially six, if, you, especially if you start scrims and, like, you lose the map first two maps or some shit. And then, like, oh, yeah. someone on the team just goes immediately, like, from, like, 75% to, like, 50. You know what I mean? Like, in the yeah. and then you're just oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? It's inevitable. Yeah, yeah. It's inevitable. And it's like, it's in our mm -hmm. role, it's like, dude, like, do I even say something? Do I address yeah. it? Because, like, 
You don't. Would... You don't. You have to pick and choose your battles. Yeah, sometimes. You can't talk about everything. Yeah, if you do, you would. Yeah, that would never work. Yeah, you'll go crazy. <laughs> but then the other thing they were saying is that um, they had they were I, they never used this phrase before. They said they've been limit testing in scrims. <laughs> what the hell do you mean by limit testing? And they're like, dude, we're just like trying to like, you know, like push our limits, like yeah, get in the best game, situations yeah. ever. Where we're pushed out to the depths on every hill i'm like that doesn't even make sense <laughs> they're like no they're like we won't do that we don't do that in matches i'm like bro i've you guys have never said this before this weekend before this talk that we're having on thursday night so i don't get where <laughs> this is coming from but hey fuck it. i can't really argue with that right like what do i say yeah. like so i was just like listen say, whatever it is sure but the reason we did it on thursday after we won is because we had that friday off and we had like warm-up scrims hmm. so it gave us a little window to like all right let's practice now like how we're going to play in these matches the rest of the weekend and we did we had a much better practice um on friday whoever we warmed up don't even remember and then played much better the rest of the weekend so crazy turnaround um for us but yeah going into the weekend gotta be honest was not fully expecting this result but like i said we take those yeah no that's that's as good as you can get but I, that's so funny that like that came out of nowhere from your players saying something like that. Yeah, like, like out of nowhere, yeah. but like, hey, fuck it. Because you guys, yeah, you guys yeah. are super aggressive. Like, obviously, when you're getting kills and shit, you guys use your kills really well. So it's like, but I, at the same time, I do know, I mean, I mean, that's even an issue with us, bro. You, I mean, you've probably seen it a bunch of matches specifically, but like, we just spawn people everywhere. And it's just like, bro, oh, this yeah. game becomes so fucking hard. And it's just, yeah, dude, mm -hmm. this, this, this game, like, you have to test its limits, but you also have to not, like, go too crazy. It's like, yeah. It, this game will let you down sometimes. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard enough to read spawns yeah. as is because exactly. like you'll, bro, you'll be in the same exact setup. People won't move and, and spawn. Yeah, yeah happen, one so. person will spawn here and one person will spawn here, and you're like, well, okay. You know, like, it's, yeah, yeah, let alone when you're actually just running around like to different mm -hmm. points on the map, different like spots like will block spawns. Like, dude, there's enough splits. There's enough chaos. No red dots on the mini map, like White Hill Time Cheese, a hotel spawn, yeah. P, or the kitchen spawn P one. Yeah, that's not like... that's not make it any more complicated than it needs to be, right? Especially at this point in the year, because I was a big advocate at the beginning of the year. I was like, listen, I will have you guys. I'd rather have you guys err on the fault of being too aggressive at the start of a new game than too passive. Like if you yeah. get caught sprinting like on the first month of the game in a setup, it's like, all right, you didn't know. But now it's like the end of the year, almost. It's like, all right, let's, you know, let's reel back in here. It's, we know what works, what doesn't. Yeah, hold up. <clears throat> oh, sorry, my bad. I didn't mean to say that out loud. All good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to I wanna switch topic for a second. I think Shane's happening here soon. You, were, you touched on it earlier that, like, uh, s &E was a big focus. And we've talked about it a lot in this show. I've talked about it on the watch party. I've talked about it on my YouTube channel. But the, you guys were solid search, but, like, the biggest issue was just, like, winning the rounds. You guys should round. Uh, yeah. and not losing them, oh, yeah. Um, and you know, it comes down to the the four v three, three v four thing. Like, is that was that a focus point, or did that just come naturally, which is sort of like more S and D practice, more reps, more working on like the system. Um, well, we, I mean, we definitely talked about it. Me and Shane have lost our heads with how we've been losing some number situations <laughs> earlier this year. You tweaking, <laughs> tweaking, absolutely tweaking. <laughs> yes, I've been absolutely tweaking about it. Um. And it's, you know, we just tell them, like, listen, when we get numbers, like, we, ha we, ha we can give something up on the map, just play together. Like, it's like, we were like, it felt like we're just like, we get a kill, four on three, and it's like, we try to hold down every lane, don't give them any openings. Like, dude, you can give them an opening. You can let them plant a bomb. All right, like, you're four on three, you can retake. You have to trust your ability and your teamwork to retake after the fact. And it felt like we wouldn't do that. So we got better at that. And the other thing is, uh, you know, shout out Draza because that I guy just—I was about to say that—that that uh, guy yeah. just became an S and D lord. Well, he was like, yeah, keep very going, bad man. major three, and then this whole stage, stage and the major, he was insane at S and D. Well, wasn't he insane at S and D though? Just because he played money eights, S and D eights. Like, didn't he play a oh, lot more S and D? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's—I uh, mean, yeah, not fucking rocket he, science. That's like, yeah, like, uh, dude, I—I I, I respect Draza in the sense, like, I feel like every time. I feel like, he, I mean, I don't know if you would know more, Cap, but like last year too, I feel like, well, last year S and D eights in general were way more popular. I feel like yeah, than they for were sure. this year. There was like no respawn ace last year. It was only yeah, S &D. yeah, yeah. And then like now, I feel like 
this year it's a little like on the opposite. There's more respawn than S and D, but like I I don't know if this is true, but I think Draza was starting his own S and D eight, like trying to get eight people to like do it himself. They're like oh, just yeah. like yeah, and like yeah. My point He's always is, trying to play. I feel like last year was the same thing. You guys were pretty good at respawn. You had your ups and downs. You did the roll switch, everything, and then like towards the end of the year when you guys like really got like like the roll switch helped you guys, and then you guys got better S and D, and you guys obviously won. I I yeah like you know. I feel like when you put in the work to like do that shit, like you kind of get the results, like respawn wise or that. I I feel like playing extra games like that is super super helpful. And 100%. I feel like well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, no, I mean hundred percent. Especially, so, I, I mean, think that's a big reason. People have this theory on eights, whether oh, it's dude, more dude. of a respawn theory that's like, it's oh, so it makes you worse. Stupid. It's like, dude, as long as you don't sabotage your own, as long as you're not an idiot, like fundamentals <laughs> and like get bad tendencies, like. It can definitely teach you different timings and different like ways to hold setups because when you're in your team envi environment, you might run into a situation where you're just playing the hill the same way over and over. Well, personally, and, yeah, dude, I agree. Like, I feel like you just like playing. Sorry to cut you off, my bad. But fucking, no, you're good. I was gonna say like I, I feel like, dude, you get like playing with other people. You can like see like so many different ways to play things or like how they do it or like whatever it is and like the theory that it makes yeah. you get bad tendencies and bad habits uh so so what the fuck does shooting bots do for you or playing rank play if anything rank play is even worse if that's, if that's, if, if that's your argument then rank play is even worse and bots don't do fucking anything and then like if it hurts your tendencies i feel like you're just admitting that you're an idiot like how can I you think rank play I, I don't get it actually i think rank play actually did hurt um some tendencies for a bit because Back to Draza, <laughs> uh, Major 3, Stage 3 was like right after Rank Play came out. He was grinding that shit. He was top of the leaderboard, <laughs> stream was blowing up, so he's just playing Rank Play nonstop. And then we get back into scrims, and it's like, he's trying to do everything. It's like, brother, this is not Rank Play, these are professional players. Like, <laughs> those top yeah, 250 guys, the they, challenge them. <laughs> they might be top 250 on the Rank Leaderboard, but deep down, they actually <laughs> suck compared to these pro players. Like, Are they, are they, are they hacking out? Yeah. Yeah. But... So, uh, you can do everything versus them, but you got to, you know, you can't try to be Superman in pro environment. You got to do your job. Yeah, no, I feel like rank plays, yeah. I feel like rank play would be the one thing that creates bad tendencies. I don't know. I think, like, the more I think about eights and stuff, yeah, I just feel like extra work can, like, to, to a degree, you can also overwork yourself, too. But, like, extra work, like, to a degree, like, can only help you. And it's also cool, like, again, you get to play with other people and, like, see, like, how other people play certain things. Because, like, for example, if you're a sub... And like one of your ARs do something and like, you know, say your AR is like, I don't know, Sam or some shit. It's like, oh shit, like Sam was doing this like while I was pushing this, mm -hmm. like that shit was elite. We should try that. You know yeah. I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like there's a bunch of shit that you can pick up on. But yeah, I think like it's it's been two years now, but I feel like every time Draza does shit like that, I feel like he gets way better himself. But I also feel like that like helps you guys a lot because of that. 100%. Oh. Especially extra work, especially when you know you're struggling. Like Zach knew he had a bad <clears throat> stage three specifically s d that's what like he takes pride in his s d mm. so when he had a bad s d stage he's like oh hell no like i can't let that happen again like i gotta get yeah. better so that's the result you go plays s d it's nonstop, and he's great yeah but he uh he had told paul x because right, i had paul x like week one qualifiers on our watch party with me and tom and paul's like yeah zach talked to me after the last major and was like i suck at search like that's not happening again and he's just been grinding the last two weeks and then he like Ride those first couple of matches in search, and we're like, all right, well, this guy's now coming different again. Yeah, um, and I, th I think it's helped you guys a lot. Um, I mean, you guys again. I, I thought like the double Asilo that hurt you guys against Phase in Major Two, you turned on his head against Optic, and we're the better team on oh, both yeah. those maps, and we're able to close out. And I think that speaks towards the the prep work and the work that you guys put in. Yeah, we've talked about those maps way too much this year because we went from how we were at major two we were pretty bad on both and <laughs> just constantly talking about those maps feels like every day is a different conversation about how we got to be playing those two maps so it paid off though so you know it's worth it good well, morning shane's here what's good brother oh, shane. shane what's up shane how's it going how's it going chris ben my love cap how's it going <laughs> what's going on bro i, I wanted to while well, i hear shane then we'll we'll take a couple of uh, questions I think maybe I don't know if you guys have been asked this a lot. Like I'd love to explore like the dynamic that you two have when you're coaching. Like like how is it set up? You guys alternate scrim sessions that you both kind of lead. Like what's the what's the chemistry like for maybe some in a home that don't know? No, we're both we're both in. We don't really alternate. We're both in every single day. Um, 
I think the chemistry is really good, you know. Um, we definitely disagree a lot, but I feel like any time we do, it gives us more chance at finding the correct answer or meeting in the middle and, say, finding an even better answer than what we debated with in the past. Um, either or, like, you know, just with that sort of dynamic, just whatever we can do to like, give, give the guys the best answer we possibly can, it sh- in theory, should only help in the long run. Yeah. There's always going to be a disagreement in the team. I always hate when people are like, yeah, I always hate when people are like, act like teammates shouldn't argue or disagree. It's like, bro, you can't, you can't progress if you don't have some disagreements. Because then if you just all see eye to eye on day one on how you want to play situations and do stuff in any team environment, whether it's COD or a sport, then God bless you. You you better, you better be winning everything then. Yeah, as well. Yeah, like that's if what I'm they, saying. Yeah, if you like, somehow see eye to eye day one, it all works. Like, yeah. all right, sure. <laughs> somehow that works. That, that's well, then, literally impossible. Yeah. People are just not holding each other because you're lacking that accountability, right? Like, the, what the disagreements come with is people trying to hold each other accountable, but also progress as a team. And you're not really checking their box. If you're just kind of all in the same way. But, like, I assume you agree, Cap. Like, when you do have those disagreements, it's all in the name of productivity, not to, like, you know, just project. Like, the idea is to figure out and align on what you want to do at the end of that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's cool. I mean, I, I'm glad to see you guys have a, a good dynamic. I think another question I wanted to ask, because I know things have kind of changed a lot over the couple of years you guys have been there. Like, uh, Brands obviously was an analyst for you. Now he's back as GM. Eric, obviously, Mud Dog, you know, former former player. Eric's obviously moved to more of a talent side. I'd love to understand, like, where, uh, and I think, Shane, you're echoing if you don't mind muting when you're not oh, talking. Yeah, I know you always got your, I deal with this all the time with Shane on FIFA, man. Uh, <laughs> Actually, am I coming through cap right now? Anyway, um, I want to kind of ask between you guys and Brandon, like, like, what's the reporting structure like to Thieves? Is Matt and John kind of leave you guys alone to make decisions? Like, are, are they sort of in the room on bigger stuff? Like, what, what is that like from an operational standpoint? Um, it's mostly just we don't – they kind of leave us alone. We don't really talk to Matt and John much, at least me and Shane. Um, when it comes to, like the team, like they'll come through the cod room and just hang out. We'll go eat lunch in the compound. They'll hang out with us. You know, they like hanging out. But they, especially with how last year went, now they trust us to get things right. Obviously, if something is going horribly wrong, they'll probably step in and be like, "All right, guys, we gotta talk." For the most part, it's just Brandon um, reports to them, and you know, we don't we don't talk to them that much on that level. Uh, same time be said right? about um, you know, other franchises I've worked with, but you know, with, with this company, it's uh, like Cap said, they kind of let us do our thing. Um, because I've worked for so many other franchises, yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I didn't, which I didn't realize would be a, a great thing until like I came in. But like you like, like Cap said, Matt will come in and just bullshit every now and then. Obviously, we <laughs> report to Brandon, and it just goes up the tree that way. Yeah. Well, cool. I, I thought I thought that was a good question to ask because I don't think a lot of people know. I mean, yeah. you guys have a lot of people in the room now, oh. and obviously, I see what Matt tweets. So I was just curious. Matt, of... Matt tweets a lot, but it's Matt, great Matt this Matt way because because yeah. in Cold War it was not that way. I know, <laughs> and I have not talked about this publicly, but Matt stepped in at one point <laughs> in one of those roster changes, one of those <laughs> seven million roster changes we made in Cold War. <laughs> Was strictly an eight shot decision, Cap, not my. They decision. were all you, Cap. Don't and it was. It was statistically the uh, worst change we had. Oh shit! So I haven't put Matt on. I'm, flash I'm, I'm, gl- I'm glad you yet, said that. But now it's out there. Yeah, now I'm glad you said there. that. That's why I was smiling. Now bro. people now right. now people are going to speculate which change it was, but I don't oh, know if you want to put gift to the He just said it. It was statistically the worst one. Figure it out. Oh. Jesus. Well, I, statistically <laughs> the worst one in terms of, I think the matches were a little worse, but also scrims. Scrims were like like we were not a great team that year to start, and then scrims went down horribly <sighs> on that one move so yeah like i said i'm not gonna say which one but nah, it's all one under the fault, bridge Cap. you got you did not work it was all one under the bridge because last year you guys obviously won champs and you won another event and then this year you're on a good path after winning this one um i think um kind of last question i have for you and then chris if you want to if you got a couple and then we take some of chat was like you know what was what was like the con after you guys won like uh sort of are there other things that you guys still you think need to work on or to win chance or is it more the next like seven weeks just kind of working on the same things that you guys have been working on in the lead up to this event 
I still Absolutely. Think have, I think we have a lot of room to improve. I don't even think we're going. Uh, I told him about our scrim stat, Shane. I mentioned that earlier. Okay, yeah, guy. Exposed that. What number did you give? <laughs> well, apparently Sam already said it. And Sam already said it. You shouldn't have told the players the scrim stats. Well, I think uh, Ken uh, came on. We did the flank uh, after you guys won, and I think Ken talked about it. Like, like one of your players came on and talked about that, like on our show about the Thursday night thing. So that was already out there, like thirty minutes after you guys had won. So it wasn't thirty minutes; it was hours. No, it was thirty minutes, bro. We were in that show. Right? You guys lifted the trophy, and oh, then oh, Kodos you then did came it. on the you show. Did. Yeah, I thought, I thought yeah, you were I was saying like, we had the conversation thirty. No, no, I'm, no. I'm Thursday. saying, I'm saying, y'all talked about it on the show thirty. Yeah, 30 yeah, yeah, yeah. After you guys had won. Yeah, that's that my makes bad. sense. But so I guess my my question to you, I think, to what you're saying is, even though you guys won, like you guys feel like you're still not where you need to be theoretically to win champs. Like there's still a lot. You know, we have seven, six weeks until that event. And obviously, there's a major in between that. Like there's still a lot that you guys want to box check before you feel amazingly confident going to that event. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's like obviously now we're the winning team. Now we're the team to beat. Every other team is going to get better from that. So for us to to assume that we're going to be ready for the next two events is just delusional. To be honest, um, it's always a lot easier to you know. Well, it's always it's always harder to win twice in a row. To win three times in a row probably hasn't been I mean, done. I'll say that hasn't been done since AW. Probably right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's when you know. No offense, Cap. We were all plumbers back then. Um, <laughs> But then, you know, like I said, we all feel like we've got a great mentality in the team. Like, nothing ever seems to be enough for us. Um, the conversation, even though our scrims were going really bad, well, like, even though our scrims statistically were going pretty bad going into the event, the concepts that we were trying to achieve were there. It's just that the kills weren't. And obviously, if you could have, you could have all the best concepts in the world, if the kills aren't coming, it doesn't matter. Um, so obviously, we can just keep keep, an improve, keep improving on every tiny little thing we possibly can. and. In this game, it's just like in this game, it's extremely hard to master. No team has mastered it. Um, like Hotel P1, probably the main map in the game. No one's figured that out in the whole in the whole league yet. So there's probably a thousand different things we need to figure out. But you know, it's going to be a war between, especially between like us, Phase and Optic, and New York, Boston. There's so so many great teams. Toronto. Like I just keep thinking of new ones every time I add an, another one to it. But Every team's gonna have to be so on point now towards the end of the year, and everyone's been working so hard to achieve it. I don't even know if the hill is you're able to even figure out the hill. What hill? You're talking about you're talking about Hotel P1, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I don't, up. bro. I don't. I man, I watch I watch so much footage. I just don't know. I don't know, man. There's just so much random shit that happens on the hill. It's just the just, the kitchen, bedroom, and P2 it. spawns are just like really weird. It's there's and like then there's like P5 spawns, and then there's weird. Like, those spawns are just so crazy. There's ways to play it and, like, you know, try and, like, control the chaos. Kind of like, Cap, what you were saying. Like, you know, even when people don't move and you're in the exact same setup, one person will spawn, like, yep. P2, one person will spawn bedroom, and one person will spawn kitchen. And you're like, what the fuck's yeah. going on? You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck's happening? So it's like, you just have to try and control the chaos, like, as much as you can. But, yeah, certain hills in this game are definitely tough. And, by the way, chat, my team didn't win three team uh, majors in a row in Cold War, so. Yeah, I was thinking about it. You didn't win three? No. Yeah, I thought that when I said it. I thought you guys might have. No, we lost, we won two. We, won, we got won major uh, one, we got second in major two, we yeah. won major three, major four, lost major five, and then won champs, right? Oh, or something right. like what that. Ter- what a terrible year you had. <laughs> I, I think that I think that was the, I think that was it. I don't even remember, but I know it was something like that. No, that was, that was it. Major two, Ben Bands went off, and you guys lost to Toronto, and then. Nick had your number in. Sounds major very. Five, Nicky you know, got last place in Sounds major very five. similar to my Cold War season. To be fair, there's just no way you can expect Sip and Abizi to yeah. outplay Nicky D. Just a mismatch. <laughs> but yeah, we didn't go on a three peat, was my point. <sighs> yeah, Nicky D is our counter, too. So, <laughs> Mr. Nick, Chris, do you have any questions for Shannon Cap? Maybe take a couple from my uh, chat. No, I'm just letting you read them, read them off. Yeah, if there's any good questions from my chat, I'll answer, ask them. But I feel like you've been hitting all the points, dude. Just letting you do your thing. Uh, I'm just scrolling through to see if there are yeah, any. Yeah, we won major uh, one, three, four, and champs. Yeah, that's what it was. Some shit like that. I don't know. I have one. Uh, I have one on re- on um on Twitter from uh oh well you guys will love who this is from from Sackman. No, you know, I just saw this pop up. I just saw this pop up. This is gonna be a sack. question, dude. God's what sake. does ball sack want, man? <laughs> oh, even Chris goes in ball sack. Wow, it's world <laughs> renowned. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. What does ball sack want, man? Uh, show show my guy Sackman. 
Uh, yes, one made cap change for the 15 roster change method in Cold War to stick him through the 05 stage in Vanguard. Mm. Bro. Yeah, yeah, Cap, you want to you wanna chime in on that one, man? Bro, listen, <laughs> there's a, I have a theory that I 100% believe in, that when you have um, a new roster in Call of Duty, mm. you can see glimpses of the potential very early if it's there. You'll always see it show up well. Even like uh, this Optic roster right now. Like, you know, the community's getting pissed because their first few matches, they kind of struggled. Meanwhile, shots don't stream talking about how good they are in scrims, but they suck in matches. But guess what? Like, we're playing them in scrims, and those guys are fucking good. Like, obviously, like, like we're saying, it doesn't show up in matches, but, like, clearly the potential was there, right? So, like, people are getting upset about it. It's not showing out right away, but that happens once you're a new team. It takes time to, like, get the consistency down. You'll see the potential very quickly, so... Uh, last year in Vanguard, even though we went 0 and 5, horrendous stage, you know, I see potential in in the players. Like we have glimpses of of greatness. Whereas in Cold War, you know, we we have glimpses of being good, but like we're playing you guys every day, Chris. Did, did, in Cold did you have War, glimpses you of being are, good in that game? Are, in Cold War? Yeah, I'm not even trying being to be good. Ass. Of being good, oh, okay. not great. Like I'm saying, yeah, in practice. Oh, okay, stuff. okay, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, I'm saying like. That's what I'm saying. The difference is in Vanguard. I saw glimpses of us being great, great, and having yeah. potential to win. Mm. In Cold War, I saw <laughs> us having potential to be top four, top three. And it's like that's not the goal, yeah. Because we're playing you guys, and you guys are slamming us on our neck every day in Cold War. So it's like, all right, well, we can't even take a map off phase in the three scrims we're having with this roster. Like, <laughs> probably not going to win a tournament. So you know, like, that's just the reality. And I don't like. I don't like like making roster moves and like dropping people, players or challengers, but like the reality is, you know, I gotta try to do what's best for LA Thieves to win and those cold war rosters just did not well, have the yeah the potential. I also think people like this isn't anyone's fault, but people just don't know what the fuck's going on ever. Like they like like with roster changes and like matches and stuff, like you only see a like like a very small portion probably you know a very important portion of like matches and tournaments and majors and shit but like r roster changes you can just like see so much more watching scrims every day and like seeing how the players are playing how their you know, their work ethic and so much other shit that goes into it of like why roster changes like actually would happen and make sense and stuff so again like even with like your shit show of a year in cold war of like having to make all those changes and stuff like what you just said is like, yeah, we're not here to get like fourth or third. And if you get eighth place, sixth place, or fourth place, or third place, like it's really all like relatively the same as long yeah, as you make nobody chance, remembers. You know I mean? Yeah, like bro, nobody remembers who got fourth or third or eighth. Like no, it's the same thing. No one remembers who gets third at champ, second. Like you're not here to contend to get second. You know, like you, you yeah. want to have a chance of winning, and if you don't have a chance of winning, then what's the point of having the roster type thing? Like it's like yeah. you, you can try and make upgrades. So I feel like yeah, like you guys are just in a really bad spot in the situation that you guys had. And then like, there was probably way others, there was probably much more stuff going on behind the scenes of why some of the changes may not have made sense to the public, but like they make total sense to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like people just don't know what actually happens or like, what's the like, actual reason sometimes because of the, like the lack of like info in the scrim. So yeah, no, I don't know. I like, well, it, this is it, the thing it was, I... like tough. I've talked to you about this, Chris, and Cap, I think even you and I have, you and I have had this conversation of, like, the, the then the issue becomes, it's like, well, if you're going to make the change, right, you're on the org side, it's like, how do you communicate these things, right? Because it's like, the, the public's not there. It's not obvious to them in that situation. But how do you effectively message why you're making the change? You don't want to nega put down the person that's rotating out of your roster because that's a shitty thing to do to that person. Oh, it's tough. Yeah, so like that, the like PR balance is really, really, really tricky. And I think like I'm sure you learned a lot of lessons from the year that you then ended up applying last year and you won chip, and now you, this year you guys have one major under your belt. What? What do you mean, like the PR well, balance of it? Like, what are you talking about? Like, oh, I'm I'm talking about the messaging. Right. I'm, I'm saying like you make the change, right? Yeah, it's obvious to you uh, internally. I mean, we talked about this with Alex and Chris. Like, like how do you? When when you end up make like from your position, right, head coach or a GM, you make the ro you make the roster change. You're just saying right? to the public. You're going to stream every day. Like, how do you message that to the public? You know what I mean? I guess yeah. you just don't. I oh, I just don't. Well, to be honest. Well, in Cold War, because we were doing so many changes, it got to like we were doing a video yeah. sitting in the like, the 
the recording studio and the compound every time we made a move, like talking about it. And Ben is right. Like there's, I don't want to like, yeah, you know, like put the players down too much, but I have to explain why we're making a move, you know, it's, it's a definitely a tough balance. Um, for sure. I don't know. It's just, it, it's just, it's just hard, man. It's just hard coming up with the right words. Cause a lot of the time it is just like as simple as like, we don't think we can win with this roster. Yeah. You know, I'm, that's what it comes down to, but the fans, the, the fans, of the team want more than that. The community wants more explanation than that. They want to yeah. know every little detail and you, know, you can't give them that either. So it's the same thing in sport though. I don't know if it's the same in American sports, but you'll never really truly know the reason why any player gets sold in football or anything like that. Apart from, like you said, maybe it just doesn't work with the team when realistically there could be a thousand and one different reasons as to why, why you think they didn't work in the team or out either personality wise or just straight up skill wise. Yeah. I don't think you have to air out everything. That's what I'd be like. I, I, yeah, that's what you're saying, Ben. Like, that's why I said, I, I just like, don't like, I don't think it's people's business to know some of the stuff, some of the stuff to a degree. Like, obviously if we make a ch- roster change and like, you know, we don't believe that we can win with this roster. Or, you know, things aren't going right behind the scenes. Like, that's usually like all you really need to know. Like, I, I don't think it's like the org or the coach's business. That's why I never really answer questions like that, or I just like troll because like I just don't feel like it's anyone's business to know that stuff. You know what I mean? I feel like that's not my place to say that. 100%. And I don't like. I think that's like. I think that's just fucking being like a, a child. Like you know, like just like just like spewing other sh- people's business that like doesn't really affect anything anyway i don't know i don't I, I think that shit's corny so i don't know i feel like that's pretty easy. yeah I and mean, that's why i'm saying it's like it's just hard chris because it's like you don't want to be fully transparent because to an extent the person you're dropping you're going to air out all their dirty laundry and that's not going to be like professional it's not always the person you're but, dropping too though. but then like but then if you don't answer that. yeah but if you don't the, the other side of it is if you don't answer the questions the questions are not going to stop that's like that's just the, the life. That's, of that's, just, that's just the life yeah. of it, bro. Like, bro, yeah, people yeah, say I'm people say I'm shit at my job all the time, and people say that that all this that they I see assumptions every fucking day in my Twitch chat about my roster and why it doesn't work and why it does work and blah blah blah. It's just a part of being a coach. That's just like what it comes down to. You just deal with that. Well, I assume all three of you have gone through that at least. Some I still get questions years. about some Cold War rosters, and I'd honestly, I'd love to just air out some shit. But you know, it's like Chris said, you as a coach. Whether you win or lose, if you win, if you win, you don't really get the credit, and if you lose, yeah, you take all the blame anyway, and that's just the uh, life of being a coach, really. I've actually never dealt with it. Nobody in the cards has ever questioned my. <laughs> no, decisions. Cap's always been no, had a lot of love. Yeah, no one's ever questioned it. You're I've the, been you're, you're the crystal coach, clear dude. track record. Yep, exactly. Well, cool. Um, I think uh, we can move on. We're going to talk about some other rosters. Can't Shane and Cap, you guys want to stick around? Uh, we're gonna like talk about optic and some other teams. Or if you guys want to dev, feel free. Yeah, to you guys. I got nothing to do. I got yeah, well, uh, three hours. That's all I got to do today, Ben. Well, now that my internet stopped <laughs> dropping frames, let's let's get into it. Um, <laughs> let's talk about optic, the team that you guys beat, um, in the uh, winners' uh, finals. And if I get disconnected mid thing, it's because I don't know my internet's just like lagging right now. Um. Optic obviously got second uh, again. Um, Cap I, and Shane, I think, kind of going into the matchup, um, were you guys like heavy counter planning Optic, or was it more about executing the game plan you wanted? Without like going into too much detail, because obviously we can still play each other a lot throughout the season. Um, the moment we lost to them online, we started talking about a game plan. Honestly, I'm sure Cap will agree. We didn't exactly start preparing for it like in practice and stuff like that, because obviously there's still incredible teams you'd have to get past on the way. But we instantly started talking about there's definitely a way we can beat them across all game modes. Um, it's an extremely, extremely talented roster. I'm sure, I don't know how other teams or if Chris can agree, but in scrims, I feel like they were, at least us, they were having everyone's number. They were a nightmare to deal with. Um, they were playing some really good COD. Um, and just playing the way we were playing in practice was definitely never going to be good enough for him. And obviously, when the situation came to put the um, game plan in place, it worked out swimmingly. But yeah, like I said, that was it's an incredibly dangerous team. And going from them, what was it nearly losing to London game one at um, major? What was it major three? Major three, yeah. Um, 
that that team turned on a new switch that was looking almost unstoppable until they walked into Toronto and going forward even from the last online stage as well and at the start of the tournament they were extremely dangerous and I'm sure only losing is only going to make them better yeah I mean that's kind of where I mean there I've talked to a lot of people Chris you probably got stories like this in Korea where like there was an event we're going in there's like one pivotal series that happened that just sort of changed the direction of the team and you look back on it it's like well what happened in that situation i think for optic that london matchup like if it, they had lost that i don't know if dan and Cotter may still be on the team but now they won and they went on that big run yeah they still haven't gotten the major win under their belt they've been the second best team at two events which which sucks because but it is what it is but like i my question to you guys is like do they need to change anything up or it's more just staying the course and then you know, eventually the major one will come just with more time. I think. I mean, I think stay the course for now. Yeah, I, I think, think they're, they're fine. Pretty, yeah, I think they're pretty good. Like really good. Yeah, I think it's just I don't know what they think their problems are. Like I don't even know. I don't have an, an opinion on what they got to do better. Um, but it's just if I was in their shoes, back to back seconds, like the odd mindset would definitely be, we just got to go fine tune th- some things. You know, like. Obviously, we kind of had their number in hard point in those last few series, but they're an insane hard point team winning 11 straight. There's like two or three maps that they just have supreme confidence in, which is great for the map pool. So, uh, like, you know, I know, like, it's like kind of same boat we're in, where it's like, we're good. We know we're good, but there's room to improve, and that's those little adjustments they make and we make will be the things that like put you over the top these next two events probably i actually have the solution to this someone in the chat just said it um screaming uh optic screaming la thieves just teaches them so it just seems that it's only hurting optic so optic should stop screaming la thieves <laughs> that's yeah, what i think no, Cap. Yeah. Sure. Sure. if you saw some of the fucking scores in those scrims they, i don't know if we were teaching them much <laughs> no no they're no they're saying they're they're saying that they're that they're teaching you Optics teaching, yeah. Yeah, optics teaching. Yeah. Yeah. I think, well, I, think I think, I think the solution is optics. <laughs> optics should stop watch... streaming LA thieves, and there you go. Solution at the. You watch us closely. I'm not sure we play very similar to them, but. No, no, it's that's what it is. Not. Oh, we copy them. Yeah, yeah. Copy them bar for bar. I uh, I forgot to ask this earlier, but I I think we should while I have you guys here. And Chris and I talked about in the beginning of the show the whole staying behind the stage thing. I'll give you guys Cap and Shane a platform to speak on oh, why God. you think all that drama is bullshit. Even real drama. <laughs> uh, there there are I can't believe we're talking about this again. Dude. No, no, but I want to give them a platform. They want to speak on it. Like <laughs> it's not a real issue. Anyone <laughs> thinks it's a real issue is stupid. Um, Shane was watching them play Mercado S and D. We haven't played that map in three months. We're talking about this. Oh, give me a fucking platform. This would be great. <laughs> and uh, the big reason people were sitting behind the players to watch is because in the venue, none of the feeds in the venue were actually real time. All the feeds in the venue, and yeah. as you, as we can see on broadcast from a small ass venue, you can hear based off the reaction when someone yells, like when they win a map. So everything's like, all the reactions are like 10 seconds ahead of whatever screen you're watching. So the only way you're watching in real time is if you go sit behind the players. So. Shane did it there. I was doing it for some other matches. Everyone was sitting behind some players watching. Like, I was getting so many hilarious tweets, bro. Oh <laughs> my god! Like, and realistically, the only fucking reason I sat behind them is because it was fucking boring watching our players shoot bots. You know what I mean? We got no one nah, to scream. You're right now. Nah, we're on to your master plan, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I was yeah. Them a card away. I, the things I was hearing, I don't, I don't know what the COD community thinks, okay? Players can get from other teams' communication. What do you think, Chris? You know, when I, if I uh, sat behind Simp, right, would he be like, oh my fucking God, Simp's just made a call out. Oh my God, I'm going to apply that to every single fucking situation he's ever going to play and we're going to counter the fuck out of him. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I think you did. I That's even messaged JP right and asked him, like, "Do you truly believe I could have get I could have got anything from watching a couple rounds of Mikado S and D?" And he just literally said, "No." Laugh out loud. I won't say what he said after that, <laughs> but you know, that it's just funny, man. No, I mean, bro. I, I, no, you, 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 you don't think Mikado. the VOD, you don't think the VOD with the the mini map codcaster is not Chris, enough? I, 
no. Chris, obviously watching four players' screens with their head in front of it, I'm going to get infinitely more information. Oh, okay, okay. My bad, yeah. Watching uh -huh. them play Mercado S&D, bro. Shane figured out that Optic throws nades over the building and then tries to win gunfights in the building. It's insane. So it's a very novel concept on that It's an map. insane strategy. They throw it's, nades it's over the building. It's a that no one else is doing. Could I? Oh, sorry, we, oh, we can't throw those fucking nades. We've been doing it all year. But my question is, why is this such a big thing with you and Optic? Every team did this. They really did. It just happened right. right before finals. Or no, I know, but like, why like is everyone not else bitching about like everyone else doing it? Bro, Toronto was sitting there watching matches. We watch matches. The other I teams watch our matches. I think when we like, played, Chris, I saw all 18 of you sat behind us. Yeah, I heard, I heard, <laughs> I heard your call. It didn't fucking help. Yeah, like, dude. What the that's, fuck are you going to get from it? That's what I was going to say. Even in the chat now, like, 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 Shane what? acting dumb, brother. If it was a problem, don't you think your players would have said anything? Don't yeah. you think? You know what the missed yeah. opportunity was? Is we, had, we, we had some big cue cards. I should have given you some big cue cards. You could just put signs behind all the players. Some funny stuff. It would have been, would have been worth it. People don't realize, like, bro, I forget what series it was this weekend, but, like, it was when the late game five. Oh, it was, it was the Vegas choke, I think. And I think everybody in the venue was standing behind the stage for that series when they blew that. I swear. Everybody got up from their station and was crying around it like it was an open open event. And it was actually kind of looked kind of cool on broadcast, but... Again, to your guys' point, it don't matter. Like, it's not, you're not going to, like, peek anything from it. It is what it is, and people are just trying to find excuses. I mean, if you, if you watch, um, I watched some, one of our matches back yesterday. I think it was round one, um, the first game versus Optic, obviously before the whole scenario where I was, I was sat <laughs> behind him in the finals. If you look at one of their screens, you've got the whole New York, both coaches, two players, and a substitute sat right behind Optic. With obviously a potential that New York could have played Optic that event. They so bad. The screenshot Wait, that did so New York play bad. Optic? They played each other. They're saying um, if Optic had lost, in, oh, in New York, I, 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 I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was. It would have been after. It would have been like, yeah, they could. They could have obviously lost to us, and then they could have eventually played them. Oh, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. Um, but you know, I so badly wanted to screenshot that and just be like, <laughs> no one right. said shit. No, it's just I don't know. I'm not listen. Yeah. I get it. I get. I get how people can see from the outside looking in who don't truly understand like what COD teams communicate like or what you can get from communication. I feel like the only thing you can really get from communication and be like, yo, these guys' comms are fucking good. They do like, listen-ins on the or, fucking broadcast. Or, yo, these guys are panicking. They got to calm yeah. down. <laughs> but these I'll guys be real, suck. Without <laughs> being egotistical, there, isn't, there probably isn't one fucking team I'd go to and be like, we could add something from their comms to ours because our comms are fucking good. I think yeah, you should right. come, come listen to our comms. I think you. I, I think bet you got fucking good comms as well. No, we do not. <laughs> <laughs> not right Jesus. now, dude. Like, dude, it's just uh, the whole thing is. Uh, I don't know. You're, you're, well, telling, uh, you're telling me coaches aren't stealing, dude. Shut the, up. The only thing I want to add to this, is you I got a big map. <laughs> I can't tell these people in your chat, Chris. Uh, I, I don't know either. I'm losing full, bro. I'm not even. The only thing anymore. I want to add is that there is not a single player or coach in the CDL who actually gives a damn about anyone sitting behind like that it's Bro, purely people... some narrative made up from like reddit and that clip of hex being like oh it's weird whatever the it definitely it says. definitely is a bad look i'll say that i'll say one thing it's a bad look because oh. people don't understand shit and then now that we have a situation like this like clearly because people don't understand how things work this is the reason why this happens people start coping over this bullshit but like dude even even in scrims cap you were standing behind my screen when you know someone wasn't playing that well you remember you know like, oh you know, yeah, 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 bro. Like, yeah, yeah. bro, bro <laughs> yeah, people, I bro, oh, people, I people, I, I think I would, I think oh, I, bro, bro, people, thrill. people were watching <laughs> people scrim. Like, bro, yeah, the, yeah, the, the the event was wide fucking open. The layout like, of that venue was just like. I do remember me and Cap watching you guys scrim, just sitting with you, and you had no problem with it whatsoever. Bro, because it, it's the same fucking shit. You can go watch my match, and you're gonna get the same fucking info. Like, obviously, if I was talking to my team about in the moment of like, you know, we need to start doing this and like, you know, we got to start like, obviously I would tell you to get, go the fuck away. But like, this is like not what happened. It's not what's happening. That doesn't happen in yeah. matches either. Like, bro, they're well, calling out. I'm glad we took it. He's one shot over there, dude. Go get him. Oh my God. <laughs> write that down, write that down. Write it down. Yo, Wait, yo, shots. He's uh... one shot to the left. Go write it down. Like, shut the fuck <laughs> up, man. All right, let's, let's move on. I'm sorry. I, I tapped the nerve there. I just need to finish that thoughts on optic. I think they're in a good spot. Um, I think control still sometimes iffy for them, but I think they'll fix it with time. I think again to your earlier comment on, on this show, Cap. I think Optic's going to be around one of the contenders all season. I think Optic fans be happy with where your team is at. Um, and they got two more events and 
I feel good about their chances going in that one. But I want to talk about a team that got fourth at this event. I'm about to ask a question. Y'all are going to get so effing mad at me, but I don't care. That's my role on the show <laughs> is to instigate and ask the difficult questions. Uh, we're going to talk about the New York Subliners. Um, they got fourth at this event, uh, which I thought was a very good placing for them considering what had happened in the previous majors. Um, but there are some idiots out there, I think, that were discrediting this potential place and saying, oh, well, the only teams they beat on that week uh, were uh, Vegas, who they blew out in the Minnesota Rocker, and they lost to Optic, and they lost and to Atlanta Face. Face. You guys, they beat us. Yeah. To what you said, yeah, they, they beat you guys. They beat us. Uh, anyway, Chris's, Chris's comment aside, like, do you guys think that's a good placement, or do you think they got lucky? I think it was a good placement. I thought it was I mean, fine. I don't know. I think I've definitely, I think the top three from this weekend was actually, was actually the top three teams. Yeah. Um, first time ever, right? Us three have been in the right. same. Is it correct? I don't uh, think that's ever happened before. Well, I feel like we, one of us usually play each that's other crazy. somehow, some way, like in the losers. Or something yeah, like early. Yeah. I think Optic got, the Optic got yeah, close. I think at major two, right? They got fourth, right? They came. They came um, like just I short. Think they did. I think yeah. They yeah. Think so. I think it's because we played them in losers, like that yeah. Sunday morning. Um. I don't know. New York's a weird team to me since Major One. <clears throat> they look very up and down. I don't know. Sometimes they look like they're in that top tier, and sometimes they just look so far off from that. I don't know. I don't know what to make of them, but when you really look at like some of the teams, I would probably say like fourth is where they should be. I, I, uh... I don't know. There's a lot of teams struggling right now, so someone... Someone's got to be fourth, fifth, and I think that's yeah. where they do belong. Look at some of the struggling teams in a second. I talked to Caesar at the event. He came on the watch party as well, and it's like they are acutely aware that like they are pulling up one day, and they're like one of the best teams in the game, and they pull up the next day, and it's just complete opposite, and that has been like a massive focus for them. This split is like just getting off the roller coaster and getting to like a consistent level. Um, and I, I, my personal opinion is this is not a fluke placing. Like, I think that team's got a lot of talent. I do think their search and destroy game is sus. And Chris, I know that you say that they should have beat you guys, they did beat but, us. but I mean, they did manage to get clutched on. And then in that <clears> last <throat> S and D, they got what eight first bloods and won three rounds or something like that. that that's a tough one. No, they're, yeah, they're no, their S and D is definitely not that good. Like, I, like, I, you know, I'm saying they beat yeah. us because we played like fucking shit and they should have beat us. But like. I don't see how you could say that's lucky. I, I agree. I, I think they, I mean, they outclassed us in respawn, and then they lost in S and D because of BT's god. Like, I mean, that was absurd. Yeah, no, it's, that's what I. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> I don't think I had like no business. Yeah, no, we had no business winning that series, plain and simple. And I don't see what's like lucky about that at all. Like, I, I think. They're a pretty good team. I think they're, again, their S&D is a little eh sometimes, and they have to work on it, and they know that, but I still feel like they play decent respawn for the most part. I don't think they play, like, the best respawn in the game, but I also don't think right now they're the best team in the game, so I think uh, there's nothing lucky about that. I agree. No. Um, and I, I think it's something for them to kick forward. I think they've now, all, the, first off, getting fourth is massive because uh, as we start to get towards the end of the season, we, we can start talking about, like, seeding for champs, and you want to be sort of near the top half so you can dodge a couple of teams. Obviously you guys talk about how you, you know, you think that your guys' teams plus optic are like the top three teams. Well you don't want to get eight, seven, six because they're scoring up against you guys. So New York's sitting in that four five spot with Toronto. They're in fifth. I believe Toronto's in fourth now. So they've given some gap. I think there are two twenty five points. Seattle's next at one eighty. So there's a decent gap now and they should be good value to get at least the top five seed for champs. So uh, saw resort for New York. I want to talk about. We're gonna kind of go rapid fire because I know Chris, you got to go in like what, twenty minutes. I'm fine. You can do whatever you want. <clears throat> All right. Uh, uh, whatever. You can throw me under the bus. If Paul complains. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's talk about teams that place top six. We'll talk about top eight, and then we'll talk about the Boston change. Um, two teams that got top six at this event, but I think had weird or, or different journeys to get there. Toronto and Rocker. Rocker started off two and zero on the stage. They lost three straight. People were like, I don't know what deal what this team is. They pulled up to the event and, and actually didn't play, I think, too bad. They're probably somewhat happy with top six, but we'll get there in a second. Then Toronto had won the last event, went one and four. It's like, well, that's the weirdest one and four of all time because 
they're playing decent respawn. They can't win a search to save their lives. They pull up to this event um, in loser's bracket, and it's they look good against Boston. You're like, okay. They look good against Florida, and then they kind of reverted the same issue against you guys, Chris. You guys beat them in the two searches and a hard point. So uh, my question to all three of you is like, which team do you think is happier with the top six? Do you think Rocker is, or do you think Toronto is? I think Rocker's got to be. I think yeah, Toronto, I think. Toronto expects to be How's that? top six. They're probably pimping <clears throat> and get further. Yeah, that, I was gonna say. I feel like Rocker. I mean, Rocker has to be. They, they, I mean, Rocker got not lucky, but they, 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 they almost didn't even get top six, right? Didn't they play a crazy fucking series? Um. Didn't they reverse sweep Seattle? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, bro, yeah. yeah. Insane. That's the what control I, looked done. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, like, like three Rocker three has to be ecstatic that they even got top six there. They were, they were, they, they were moments away from getting even worse. And then I feel like, why would Toronto be happy with sixth place? They just won the event. They just won major yeah, three. After, like what? After Toronto winning anything other than first, I feel like it's just, yeah. they're just going to be pissed off with. Yeah. But yeah, Minnesota. That that series was obviously with combined with Vegas going, um, zero and two. Mm-hmm. I, think it was, I don't know, was that even like a 20, 30 point lead now or something like that? Yeah, that was the big yeah, They're, they're like, on 150 in Vegas on 130 That was now. huge for them, actually. Just that to, is yeah. monumental. And, and actually, monumental for them. Boston is now only 10 points ahead of Rocker. So if Rocker have a good stage, they might be able to leapfrog in the seventh. And then if they play even better, like they can challenge Seattle for the sixth spot. So like I think they've, they, they definitely had a great weekend and leave some of the pressure that like, was clearly there the last couple of weeks like even going in the end of last event where it's like well now you all just let vegas back into this eight spot race so i think one to watch i agree with you guys on toronto i i they're in such a weird spot right now i talked to scrap too and it's just like they're they're gonna go back and and it's clear that like the respawn's not bad they went this stage 10 and 4 and hard point the match is pretty good Did uh, they? They, yeah they went 10 and 4 and hard point this stage only map where they had a losing record was Embassy, where they lost one Embassy, and they ended up seeing Embassy they played. They went five and three in in control, so maybe a little bit of con, uh, of regression control because they were like pretty automatic in the game mode. But three and nine in the search is just not going to cut it. If you want to play better at land, and uh, that includes an O and one on Fortress, O and three on Hotel, O one on Mercado. So the map pool wasn't great. And when I talked to Scrap, it's yeah, and the team, and they're they're going to go back and get better at search. Um, but the benefit to them is they're about to play in front of a home crowd in like a month so maybe that gives them a lot of boost we'll see uh want to rapid rapid fire and uh talk about the team that lost to rocker in that reverse sweep which is seattle um this is a weird team bro uh what do you guys think it is with them when they get bounced to losers their record in losers this season is very bad i think they've only got like two wins in losers bracket um and they got one in this event when they beat lag but obviously they lost to rocker like you think they're just kind of losing focus? Like, what do you think is happening once they lose a tough winter series and they've got to then grind through the bracket? Um, I don't know about what it is in losers. I just think that team's play style is complete chaos, and it's hard to be consistent with how they play the game. Like, if you look at them, because they've had the same roster now since the start of last year. Yeah. And it feels like one event they're a contender, next event they get last place. Next event they're a contender. And like they've been like that for two years now. It's just like that doesn't make sense. A team who you would think like is a good matchup, a contender most tournaments should have more consistency than that. So I don't know what it is. Um their point of view. I don't know about loser's bracket. I just think their play style is way too chaotic for them to like be consistently good just relies on too much hero plays too much individual um bail out two pieces three pieces and you know it's not it's not how you win consistently in cod and beat top teams do you guys agree shane and uh shane and chris uh um, yeah for sure yeah. i mean i think a big thing for them is their search is super fucking inconsistent too like that's why, like, that's it, why. like they they they're up and down as well. Like, they they definitely play like a super weird play style sometimes, like with their aggression and just like how they are. But like, you know, I don't think I think Mac played pretty poorly at this event in general, including that really bad play that he had that didn't help. Uh, 
And then I think just yep. yeah, like their search in general is like so like wishy washy that like like that's like so what Cap was saying, like being a contender one event and then like not, it's just like really, really dependent on just you know, that mode alone, let alone again, like if Mac plays bad, then it's like kind of tough too. Like, you know, like I, I, I think he's their X factor. There's a lot of pressure for that, but he, him not playing oh. as well, like kind of probably hurt them too, in a sense. Like, I don't know, but their play style is very chaotic where I do think it also probably puts him in harder positions than he needs to be in. But at the same time, like, yeah, I think that, I think that search mode is going to be a really big reason why like they're up and down sometimes, you know what I mean? Cause if they make it to game five, like how many, you know, they can win a game five. They've done it. But like, you know, if you're a Seattle fan or you're, you know, you're watching a Seattle match and they make it to game five, most people are just like, uh Oh, you know, like this is going to be a tough, like they turn it off. Yeah. That's yeah. It's like respectfully. Yeah. You, you don't want to have that going into a game five ever. So it's like, I think that's a big yeah. reason why sometimes they struggle is just because if you know, you lose one hard point on someone going big, a, a player on the other team making a really good play or something like that, then you go game five, all of a sudden you're in a really tough spot, right? So it's just like hard. Yeah. I mean, Mac definitely, <laughs> Mac definitely had a bad weekend, but like you said about being put in tough spots, dude, he had oh, that no, play he plays a harder hotel. Game than most. Play that, he had that play on hotel Cindy where he didn't check the bomb. That was tough. Or didn't need it, whatever happened. Yeah. And then like the next round, he just, they're on offense. He just tries to like dive across. Mm hmm to the A bomb site and like just dies for free. It's like and no two one's people there. And no one on his yeah. team is even close to being in the spot to helping him. It's like, is that his team's game plan to send him out to the to the wolves like that? Or like did he go too quick? So I don't know. It's, Mac plays a harder game, even in hard oh, a hard point in my opinion. I think Mac plays sure. a very hard I game. Think he does. They like they started like squaring up like Pred started squaring up AR's middle map. Like they so they lost that round, right? The only one round. They were still up four three in the surge, I believe. I was like, okay, well, we trolled, but we're we're chilling. And they they started just taking the ego chalice to try and like almost play like ISO ball, whatever, in COD. And just, I agree with you guys. I think the search and sometimes the respawn is just super hit or miss. And like, yeah, last year they kind of peaked at two really good times. Uh, they won the event in Toronto where everything was clicking. They were clutching up. They were winning searches. And then at champs where they came up just short. And again, I think they came up short because. Chris, I think what you you guys and who else they play pretty much exploited the Tuscan S and D against Seattle and just the way they just didn't watch Middle Map and a bunch of other stuff. Like they're just not a good search. But I agree with you guys. This year, if they want to like actually win an event or or make it deep at champs, like they've gotta they've gotta change something up there because this play style is just gonna be like playing the yeah. roulette table. And heads up, I have to move my car in like five minutes. So I didn't I didn't All even right. realize I had to do that, but now I do. Yeah. But, well, so. let's 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 rapid fire then. Uh, I'm gonna get, we'll get to the last thing and then we can get out of here, which is and then we can uh, people in chat and on on the other stuff. We'll do an episode next week so we can chat about some of the other stuff we didn't cover mm -hmm. uh, next week. Uh, I want to talk about this Boston change. So Boston got dead last at this tournament. Um, probably, well, I think someone was gonna end up getting screwed based on sort of the Toronto situation. Like someone was gonna get twelfth. Uh, and Boston was a team that did, and they did not look good at this uh, event. And they decided uh, when they got back, they were going to very quickly make a change. And they have benched Nero, and they brought Reese Vivid back in. Curious your guys' thoughts, and if this is going to change anything with the team performance. That seems uh, it's, obviously we don't like we said earlier. We have no idea what's going on behind closed doors. But as a team, whichever team change they've made over the last two or three, however many they've made, I've, I've always thought they played some really fucking good COD. Um, especially well, just just going by respawn for sure. I don't really know the rest of D stats or anything like that, but on paper, based off the map, it looks like they play some good cod. So I don't know why they're like having these struggles or why they think they need to make these changes. Obviously, I've always thought Vivid was a really good player, really dangerous player. But again, because because we scrim them so much, I think that. But again, not really paying attention to why they lose matches or anything like that. So it's hard to say really, but um. Just have to trust that um you know the coaches are making the right decision because Krem Krem looks like a good player um but obviously I've always thought Nero was also a really good fucking player so maybe they see Vivid can bring something different we'll just have to wait and see. It genuinely looks like all five players they have in that mix are pretty damn good players. Like yeah. they have potential to be top players, win tournaments, but they. They just, I mean, they just don't have an ice factor straight up. Like, they just choke in some crazy situations, it feels like, in matches and, like, the 
I don't know how it went this weekend at the major, but like their qualifier matches, they had like three matches where they outslayed heavily and just lost a series. I'm just like, that doesn't make sense. Something's wrong fundamentally at that point or something, or we're just choking insane rounds of search or control or whatever. But I don't know. That's a weird team because, like Shane said, they they do look good in scrims versus us, but for them, obviously, it hasn't translated the matches. So don't know. I. I my theory on Boston is that to your point, Cap, is that I think they have they're all they're almost like they have another they have a they're almost still early, I think, because they've got like four really talented players, but they almost lack when you listen to their comms and you watch the minimap, like they can definitely slay, but I just don't think they make the right decisions on top of whatever game five clutch big game issues they yeah. have. And I think they're gonna like this team is solid. They have been good all season. This is obviously a bad placing, but like they have been competitive all year. I just think they're heading towards an off season where they've got to decide like, okay, like we've got a lot of really talented young players on our team. Like, are we, we need to figure out how to get someone who's won before to like get over the last hurdle with this team and like give them whatever tools they need to get over the hump and then like be the team that they should be. Do you think yeah, that that's like probably a fair assessment of like where they're at? I think that's pretty fair if they can't figure it out on their own. Um, but I don't know. You never, you never know like what their the players' mentalities are like, especially now because this has been kind of going all season almost with them, where they look better to us in practice than they do in the matches to the public. Um, because there was a time where like I thought going into stage four, like they were definitely a top three, four team. Or maybe stage there, I don't know. But I definitely think they're up there based on what I see. But then I look at like the community reactions and they don't see the same thing, obviously. And they're like, oh no, Boston's like bad. Like they're bottom tier. And I'm, I don't know. There's two completely different viewpoints. Well, I just think because <clears throat> in people's eyes, it's like if you're not beating Thieves Optic Phase, like what are you doing here? And I think that's really the community assessment. It's like, okay, like cool. You guys are definitely talented enough to be Florida, Vegas blah 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 but every time this team has gone into a big series this year they only won like one of them um and i think that the community's assessment is just like oh it's it's almost kind of like i guess this team is sort of where they're at they're just going to be top six i think from my perspective it's these are talented players but bro like look at the experience on boston compared to chris your team or cap your team or optic even and I know that they've got, like, they just brought Dan up, but the th other three players have been around for a long time. Like, they just don't have the experiences that some of these other top teams do. And I think either the young players are going to figure it out or they're going to have to be in a position of, like, how do we bring a player in that has that that can then uh, bring those tools to the other players and they can kind of become better versions of themselves. Yeah, Definitely. in theory. In theory, that'd be great. It's just tough to find that player because, yeah. like, like we're saying, like they're very talented. Boston is very talented players. Whether like all, like I said, all five of them I think are very talented. So it's tough when you, you know, if you're gonna find a replacement, someone with more experience. Usually that's like a less talented player. It's like, do they want to make that sacrifice? And I don't know. Luckily, we're not in charge of those decisions. So CDL Paul, my chat saying, uh, Doug is a vet. He's also on their academy right, team. I'll be Bring in Doug. Uh, listen, love Doug. I just think if you want to give Doug a shot, um, you're going to have to change. It, it's going to come, it's going to come with some mega system changes and I don't think he's going to give you high slaying. So it's just going to be a whole thing. If you want to go down that route, Damon's in my chat saying might be heading to Boston. I don't know, Damon, you might have to help them out where I was going with it. Uh, cap was like, maybe the biggest, what if in Boston this season is like, should they have tried to pick up clay? And not Kev's in. I think uh, I think no, obviously we don't know how to answer, yeah, I don't think we know how to answer that question. And I understand why they made the decision based on like how Clay had played the season before and all that New York drama, but it's like conceptually that's sort of the, the type of player that they're missing, you know? Someone that's won, won a lot, won world championships, has developed young players before, and it's just like how do you take their addition to our culture and like go from being a top six team to making Sunday every event? I mean, in theory, in theory, Clay could have been great, could have been what they needed, but could I mean, you never know. Could have been worse. Could have yeah. been not the not the slayer they were looking for in that role. Because I think uh, 
Bean, I don't know what Beans' stats look like on the air, but that dude looks talented when we scrim them. Like he he wins some crazy fights. Him and Wake win some crazy fights as an AR duo. Like obviously that's not really their issue is playing, but well, like I said like what where do you where do you make the sacrifice? Where do you draw that line where it's like these you know these extra kills really aren't all that valuable. Like we need something else. So Ben's stats in control are really good. Uh, ben's stats in S and D. I'm talking about Ben Beans here. In uh, and S and D are really good. And he's a dynamic search player, like AR um, sniper. Like he brings a lot, gets a lot of first bloods as well, which is really good. I think he's almost struggled in the hard point. I wonder if when I listen to their comms, and it's going to sound crazy at times, he might be the person that talks the least on the team. Uh, and, and I feel like he's got to make an adjustment of like getting more in the action, getting more involved in small talking. If he's getting into weird situations, is he not kind of communicating well enough to the players in front of him to ensure that he kind of has the information needed to make the right decisions. I think that's almost an adjustment he needs to make to this level of the game. Cause maybe he got away with that in challengers where, you know, I've had, we've had players come on this or come on the watch board and say in challengers, you make the right play. You're good in challengers, but in the pro level, everybody makes the right play. You just got to make it quicker. Like, <laughs> Strongly disagree with that, but I mean, what what would what would you what would you assess to that? If you just as far as, wait, as far as I'm just saying in general, I don't think pro level pro players make the right play. I still think that's one of the core things that just separates the best teams from even middle of the pack teams. I think middle of the pack teams. I see. I saw so many teams this weekend who like. Will be in a breaking situation in hard point or a control setup. They'll get a kill, they'll get the entry kill, and then just not move. I'm like, what the? Oh, dude. The hell is the point of the kill if you're not going to take map control and push <sighs> up the map? So this, you basically just described London is what you did. This, this is the London. No, London gets kills and runs the guilty way. of it. But I promise you, I promise Everyone you, there's, <laughs> I promise you, there's more teams who you think much higher of than London who yeah. do the same thing. Don't move. Just get the kill, and then they don't. Just get, it's got to kill and just stay in their preem. It's like, bro, you got like a short window where that guy's off respawn and then has to run back to the end of the play where you have numbers and can do something here. And I don't know, teams just don't take advantage of it. I think I think my point cap is yeah, like I, I see what you're saying. Like people are still making mistakes at the pro level. When I've talked to like Nick Classic about this, for example, like Nick says, like, uh, you know, just when you go to challengers and like you you make the right play, like even if your slaying is, you know, whatever. Like you're still you're still setting challenges because even your mid tier AMs are just consistently just don't know how to play the game at the level required. But you get to pro level and like you need to rely on not only your individual decision making, but to my point about Ben, it's like maybe he's just not engaging himself enough in the comms to give him the right information flow. Yeah, could, I don't really yeah. know. I don't really know what Boston's comms are like. I don't know if I've paid attention much. They're, to they're not great. No, yeah, I, I don't know. Great. Looking at their roster, I don't know who would really be like a. A vocal leader there who would take over the comps because normally but there's some correlation where AR players are usually the more vocal ones. Tip obviously there will be exceptions, but typically I feel like AR players speak more. I think maybe it's because like they're gonna be a little slower on the map, less chaotic, so they can see more and communicate it better, but I don't know. I think Boston's definitely lacking there. Yeah, I agree with Cap. I feel like we've been, especially with him, well, assuming he's young, he's just uh, came in from the challenges, like being inexperienced at the pro level, his pacing might not, might not be consistent. It's, it's hard even at the highest level to, you know, be at the right pace at the right time, when to slow down, when to speed up. And he does have the ability to, like when any, any top player, you can get away with a bad decision by just using your ability and at the highest level from right at the top team that those things are always going to happen obviously with more experience um understanding the pace of the game i'm sure i'm sure he'll develop into uh, a very very good player because you can just see it watching him he definitely has the talent to do it yeah i, I agree and that's just a question for boston is like do they maybe the wise thing is they're going to do this nero for vivid swap and emts in my chat and i've heard of people talk about this like maybe the thought process reese's comms a little bit better than nero's and they just want to try it because it's really the only move they can make right now. They want to see how it goes. But you just kind of accept that the team is the team. 
and that they may not necessarily hit their ceiling this year. And then, you know, as is with the Boston project, like nail the next off season and then go from there. Um, because it's possible that they're just sort of missing the final piece still with these four players. Anyway, I think that's most of the teams. Like, again, I know people always complain early on Twitter when they tweeted me, like, we don't talk about Florida or London or this team or that team. I just think they're boring, respectfully. I'm not trying to, to talk diss about. on the team. I, I, have not, not talk about. I have a question about those teams, though, for you guys, because I'm curious, because I've heard people say that it doesn't even make sense for their, those bottom tier teams to make a roster change at this point. I disagree. I disagree strongly yeah, I with disagree that. I think as well. I think even if <clears throat> your bottom and maybe champs looks unlikely, but like ideally you would have done it before major four well, or something. But uh, even now with you have another tournament left, like bro, you can my my thing is like, could turn around pretty quick. Yeah. I, my know? thing is like with what you said, well I guess there is something to talk about now that we're doing it. But fucking like it, just because you can't go to champs, I know this is so much easier said than done, too. Because the mindset definitely gets chalked once that probably happens, I'm assuming. But, like, dude, like, once you once you can't go to champs, that doesn't mean, like, the year is just over. Like, yeah, you can't go to champs, but, like, bro, from an organization standpoint, you should still be trying to find the core of your roster for the next year. You, should, you know, you should still be trying to figure out, like, 100%. something something that you can work with to go into the next year, right? Who you need to get rid of, who should stay. Maybe this team clicks major five, and even though they can't go to champs, they have a really good major five placing. All right, now we're going to work off of that, get this guy in the offseason, boom. You have a good team for next year. Like, So from an organization standpoint, you can still try and build like a slight foundation for the future of your team. Like, I think that's really important. And then like from a player standpoint, too, like you should like just because you can't go to champs, you can still win. What did you guys win, Cap? 50K each? Yeah, 50K like, each. You can still fifth win $50,000 each if you win. Like... And not even that, like, on top of that, it's still your career. Like, bro, if you just get, like, last place, you go down and out, and, like, you show no sign of life, like, getting yeah. picked up on a team next year is a lot harder. Like, it, it's still, like, your career, it's the organization, it's their future, like, it's everything. Like, you should still be going as hard as possible, because why the fuck would you not? And also, from an organization, why am I paying you to not, to just, like, you know just yeah. roll over and give up like you can't do that like I don't, I don't know i feel like it's really important to make them a change if they can it's still important for the foundation of their team people notice that too and like people oh, yeah. in the community talk like when times are tough like yeah you're on a bad team like how are you acting like as a player yeah, even as coach like a like, fucking dweeb then you're are you just yeah. giving up are you working through it like like people people talk about that stuff so talked about it gets a lot. spread in even getting like a top six in like a good looking stage where you maybe go three and two in online qualifiers, a top six at the event or something, or even a two and three compared to like how some stages have been going. But like that just looks so much better than, you know, another tournament where it's like, Oh, Oh, and five, one, and four, last place. Well, that's how you quickly shit. get, that's how you quickly get forgotten about. Like you said, Chris, yeah, like, sure. organizational and, and players, you and... can pick up a player right now to make one small change. You might yeah. be able to take that chemistry you've just shown into the next season. Now you've got two players, maybe three of a core roster, then you only need one more piece to, you know, maybe go from a bottom team to a top six, and then exactly. each year you develop, develop year from year. You find yourself well, I would team. say that this is, uh, I, I know, listen, I know that LAG and London, there are questions about, I know on the LAG side, like what's going to happen with the org in the spot on the London side, they're owned by KOI and it's like, are they going to rebrand? What's going on there? Don't really answer those questions, but I think one thing that, three of these teams should consider is there's a number of really good players in Europe that have not been given a shot playing while at LAN, elite, whatever. Now is the time to get ahead of that offer a little mini salary. So you have them locked in for this season, work on their work visa stuff. You're going to have them on your team next season and jump any other teams that want to make a move on those players in the su in the summer or a player like Abuza who really has talent and just needs someone to just, take them to the next step and develop them as a project. Like any one of those orgs should be thinking about players like that. Um, Cause it could be a particularly uh, great piece going the next season, the season beyond that, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't think it's just time to just fucking roll over and give up Yeah, from both sides. Again, you want to try and find people like you just said, that's a really good idea for those teams. Obviously LAG is on the fence because of what they're doing, but like teams like London and anything, like you should be trying to find your base as much as possible to build something for the future and like also yeah. like feel how like the players are out and like what cap said too like i think that's super underrated what cap said but like yeah like people talk in the community and like 
if you're on a team that's just getting shit on and you also just give up and like again roll over give up and like show no signs of like fight through the adversity like i mean cap you can probably cap and shane you guys like would you ever want to coach a player like that absolutely oh, no. not yeah, exactly because at the end I mean, and also like to double down on that hey, you guys have won a world championship you've won majors you go through adversity you know what I mean? You're gonna get, you're gonna have a major, no matter how good you are, no matter who's on your team, that you're gonna you know go through some adversity. And if you have a player like that, like, that just like fucking chalks it up and gives it up, then like what the fuck are you gonna do? Do you know what I mean? Like it's, you it's, have zero it's, chance at that point if there's yeah, you know, yeah, one of those. So it's like coaching players like that. Stuff. Like I would want to come nowhere near that. You know what I mean? Like that's like I don't know. I feel I feel like that's like super important to like. Again, sure. easier said than done, of course, but it it really shows a lot about like you as a player. Like when you're in situations like that, for example, if London were to come out and get top three at this next major, some crazy way or something like that puts them on the map massively for when yeah, sure. better teams make changes. You know what I mean? Like, my, like, I don't know. My thing is too, with the format we have now, it's like a good placing. It's not that crazy. You know, you get yeah. like eight teams oh, make one yeah. bracket and then you have to win two matches to get like top three. Like you're saying you win two matches in winner's bracket, you get top three. That's good money. Like if you're <laughs> really good money. If you're <laughs> even points, you don't even have to be like you, you can get a top three placing without being a great team. Yeah, you know, maybe easy. maybe you just get really good at like search and mm -hmm. then like you can like you know, and then you sneak with respawn. Like there's ways to do it without having top talent and top expectations and you know, sometimes one or two roster moves are all the difference between a bottom tier roster and a contender. I agree. Yeah. I and mean, to Ben's point, it's like again, finding one of these players for next year for like what we at six weeks of the season left. Yeah. You sign a player next week for the price of nothing. Four thousand dollars <laughs> now, maybe four and a half thousand dollars now. A visa might know. cost more than the salary yeah. you're gonna pay for the visas, visa costs a few grand, four or five grand as well, whatever like that. But you sign a player now, you can put him in for a game. Obviously it's different for London. Like you said, you have to get visas there to get a European player, but there's obviously American challenges too. You take a risk now, four grand, that could be a player you now re-sign for next year. You might be the best forever for your team a year after that he might be worth three hundred four hundred thousand dollars to another player if they're looking at it from a business sense and yeah yep. a lot of teams just don't take these risks you know agreed okay. uh i want to move on real quick one last question fast question and then we'll get out of here uh because people in my chat are complaining and talk about them vegas oh, true. three three word question are they chalked um I don't know if you guys have seen their schedule know. for this. Oh, they, 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 they play like insane. everybody. I'm pretty sure they play oh, like the they, top five of top six teams or some shit like that. So they play. They play Optic, New York, Phase, Rocker, Seattle. So they don't play Thieves. That's the only other top team that's missing there. But they essentially play five of the top. Yeah, six, no. Seven when, when's that Rocker league? match? When, is that early in the stage or that I think later? It's like second or third, or fourth game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's one of those things, obviously, like they've had some rough starts to the season, obviously with Clay, very passionate player. Um, they're definitely not going to go down without a fight. And at this stage of the season, no matter how good they are or like anything like that, men, men, mentality wise, they're going to be one of the worst teams to play. They're the team that are fighting for absolutely everything right yeah. now. So no matter what, they're either going to, well, they might, they might break under it, but Either way, if they don't break under it, they're going to be a nightmare to play against. These are another four players. They might also be looking at like they're also playing for their careers, and it's it's hard to beat that level of intensity, you know. If there's one guy that can again not kind of just like roll over and give up for the most part. Like I feel like Clay's career is a pretty big tell for that. I mean, you know, like everyone has their ups and downs through it, but like I feel like a lot of the times when Clay fit, like faces a pretty tough scenario, he's usually yeah not one to just give up and. Yeah, I, I, you know, there's probably a few people. I said this earlier on stream. I think like he's one of the few people that could pull some bullshit off like this. You know what I mean? If like you know, with his team and stuff, obviously it's more than just him. There's so much more factors to it. But yeah, like what Shane said, I agree. I think they're going to be fighting for their life, and they're going to be in a really hard team to play. They obviously have some glimpse of greatness in there, going four and one, and then they kind of like fell flat on their face. But like you can't count them out fully. Is it going to be hard as shit? And is it probably not going to happen? Probably, but like they can, they can do it. Like it is possible. It's just. I mean, I don't know crazy. the exact. Definition yeah, I don't know exactly. Yeah, same. Yeah. New York did some way, way crazier yep. shit. Yeah, dude, that was opinion. a miracle run. That was crazy. I, I think essentially for Vegas, they need to. If I'm first off, 
I hope to, they have to hope that Rocker go to this uh, home series in St. Paul. They play London and Boston and hope that they go one and one or oh and two. They need they need Rocker to get like thirty points because if if uh, if Vegas can only get like twenty, then you only lost ground on ten, and then it becomes now racing situation. I would say for realistically for Vegas based on how CDL points work at a given event, they, what they probably need is to make it to Sunday at minimum may have to make it to grand final, but third, so fourth is four. probably a minimum they need. And that entirely depends on how rocker plays. If rocker get dead last, they get zero points. And let's say a deficit is like 20, they get fourth. Well, now you have 10 more points to them and you make champs. Yeah, no, so, it's, it's doable. Yeah. It's just going to be really it's do, hard. It's doable. It's going to come. It's literally going to come down. It's probably going to come down to Friday and Saturday at Toronto, essentially when it gets yep. locked. And they they just got to Vegas essentially try and go two and three at minimum, make it in the winners. If you win two series, you're going to put a lot of pressure on Rocker to match at that point. Dude, I just pulled up Either their breaking point. I wanted to see yeah. their stats. He's got to win a damn control, bro. They oh, are seven bro, and so, twenty-four. Bro, they're seven so bad and at control, twenty-four bro. in control in there. Yeah. Bro, they're. I mean, I knew they were bad. That is no, insane. it's no, it's really God. bad. It's yeah. it's. Do we? we talked to, I've talked to Clay and Don about this so many times on stream, and they say, "Well, we're better in control in practice. A lot of our issues are just making the wrong decisions at the end of rounds." And it's like cool, like, but they just haven't yet. Bro, it's been four majors. It's what I like, said about my team. Dude, it's been four fucking majors. You have to either fucking do it or you, you're not going to win. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, you have to do it. Bro, and they're, they're trying everything. Like, yeah. they're, they're playing a lot of Expo. They tried to play a CeeLo again. They just, they, they've got to they've gotta figure out something to control. They're a really good search team. No, like, they're second, third best search team. Hardpoint has gotten way better on that team. They're basically splitting hard points in a given series. But the as we have seen time and time again this year, the team that wins the third uh, map wins like what 70 or 80 percent of the time in a given series like you're mm -hmm. just handicapping yourself so much control is really important by just being the worst control team in the game yeah i so. think until recently we had a stat i don't know if it was true but we had a stat where over the last two years we've never won a series where we didn't win the control until like a few weeks ago yeah i mean well really? i'm sure i'm sure stats yeah, like that up. are probably like are probably pretty crazy like you probably don't even like think of it like that just because control is only one game mode but it's been talked about on the show. Yeah, dude, control is super important, dude. It saves your ass. It fucking closes out series. It gives you the momentum to go up to one. Like, yeah, it's, it's, just so, it's just everything, dude. Because if you're really good at one game mode out of the two, out of the hard point search, whatever it is, and then you're just good at control, you can always get by, like, one way or another. You know, it's just how yeah. you can, it's, it's always possible. But if you don't have that third game mode, it's like, you know, you can lose, you can go, if you can go 50-50, in hard point and search, right? Like technically you can get three would before you even have a chance to play the second hard point and search. You know what I mean? So you can just get three would and not even have a chance if you're going to go 50, 50. So like that control is like a huge swing mode. So yeah, them, that, Probably them deluded. Yeah. Being, being that, no, you're fine. I was saying them being that bad at control is just really tough. Probably maybe a deluded opinion as well, but maybe apart from this year, statistically it probably backs up. I've always thought control might be the most elite game mode in terms of that seems to be the, game mode where all the top teams every single one of them oh, is yeah. good at it maybe it has the least amount of upsets in terms of who's playing each other on paper it looks very simple get a few kills stack the point and honestly it is like that but because it is that simple that you put the tiniest step wrong mm. you're, you're now getting four stacked you've now lost the round like you so i think that's also what makes it fun really. yeah yeah no you, you i mean i'm sure there's a stat to that and i'm sure you're fully correct Dude, like control is it yeah, like usually the I think even in Black Ops Four, the good control teams are really good. Yeah, like like you know, like we're the top teams. I feel like control is just yeah. Probably the most underrated game mode like ever. It's like in yeah. the sense of just how it plays. It's so weird. Yeah, I agree. So anyway, I, I think we can talk about it more next week. I know yeah. Chris, you probably gotta go to Scrims, Cap and Shane. I don't know if you're scrimming today, but you gotta go. But I appreciate you guys hopping on Shane and Cap. You guys are always welcome uh on the show. Um so Feel free to join whenever. Hit me up, and uh, good luck to your boys. You guys try to go back to back. Uh, where I think we're all excited to go to Canada, so that'll be in like three or four weeks. If if anyone's watching this podcast and you haven't gotten your tickets yet for Toronto, I think Sunday's completely sold out. So you should probably start getting on those tickets if you haven't bought them already. It should be a lit event. Uh, Chris, I'm gonna do. Hey, Chris, you scrimming today? Okay. What? <laughs> you scrimming today, Chris? Um, I don't. We might be. I have to see. Well, cap sound the bat it. signal. That's some passion. That is. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't 
think we are today. We might be. I, I think it's on the fence. I I don't think it's like we have planned streams, but we talked about it. We might. You know? All right. Fair enough. Well, fair enough. Catching up, dude. Actually, you know, you know, what, what, I'm saying, you know what? We're not scrimming today, bro. Don't you? Don't you? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take the week yeah, off. Yeah, then. We're no, not, yeah, yeah. We're taking. We're actually taking yeah, the week off. We too, bro. You're good. You're good. Today. No worries. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll get Shane back on a uh, cap on our hundred no grind of FIFA. Eventually, one of these days, we'll pull it off. Um, you want me to do the rest of the outro, guys? Yeah, you're good. You're good. All right. Well, appreciate y'all tuning in. As always, if you guys want to see uh, more episodes, uh, check out uh, Crowder's YouTube channel. It's in the uh, bottom of the screen. It's Crowder YouTube. If you're listening to this on audio um we do these every week usually on tuesdays but this week it was wednesday just because of how things worked out we'll probably do it next tuesday stay tuned on our twitters for more information on that and we'll see you guys on the next episode thank you all so much